right, what is up everybody? The Zombies here again, and today we are back for another episode of the Fighting Pit Podcast. I am joined, as always, by my two co-hosts, Malhu and Tankster, but we have a little uh, little surprise this time. It is not just the three of us today. We actually have a guest, and that guest is none other than the recent champion of the HS Replay Tournament, Dallas. How's it going, Dallas? Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'm good, thank you. Uh, and thanks for inviting me today on your show. Hope everyone's uh, feeling pretty good. You, you look pretty cold there, Mr. <laughs> Zombie. <laughs> Just a little. It's, uh, you know, I, I live in the South now, so it's warm most of the time, but we do... We do get a little bit of uh, some random cold weather in those, you know, January, February months sometimes. Mostly it's rain, but still a little colder, so bundled up a little bit today. <laughs> uh, I, bundle? You know, Did you say bundle? I hear bundle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <no>. Bundle? <laughs> oh, floor? <laughs> yeah. Now, now you're uh, speaking Dallas's language. He's he's all about the, the bundles because he is Feed the... Me bundles. Uh, the diamond <laughs> champion, if if you didn't know, so Dallas oh, really? is a uh, he is another great content creator in our mercenaries community here, and he actually has well, I guess had I have to wait on Belinda uh, all the diamond mm. portraits for all mercenaries. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, I'm jealous too. Uh, it's it's quite a feat. Um, it's wait, which yeah, is your favorite? I used to be. Yeah, what's the best diamond, Dallas? Oh, only you know. Remember, you were doing a tier list the other night. <laughs> you're like, you're well, yeah, no, someone. List. Um, that's right. Yeah, I, I would be doing a diamond tier list. Uh, I think um, the other tier lists, like, they're not pointless, but they can be uh, a waste of time. Yeah, they take very long. Easy content. Uh, <laughs> but a diamond tier list based on like my own criteria which mm -hmm. i haven't um uh decided what that would be yet uh i would put in the s tier for me I, i'm trying to remember it was illidan yeah definitely uh definitely illidan there was anduin because he looks cool and the bm factor oh yeah top tier bms Goran. oh yeah and then the third one was sylvanas so oh yeah sylvanas sure. was like I mean, even when she wasn't seeing any play, I wanted that skin so bad. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. just so pretty. <laughs> really, really big fan of that. Um, let's see. So, and, uh, oh, no, sorry. Go ahead. you're good. Uh, no, to answer your question, mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say it would be uh, Illidan. Illidan. My favorite. Good choice. Yeah, I'm still choice. diamondless, so I have no input. Not that's one. what happens. That's that our resident free to play uh, Mullahu yep. over here. We he we deeply <laughs> appreciate your sacrifice. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He speaks for the people. Yeah, exactly. A man of the people. Yeah, right, yeah. That's true. Yeah. He, uh, I I for you. I hope it's like Malfurion or Anduin or someone that you like spam constantly. Yeah. I hope it's not like Uther or something. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> All right. To be fair. Even well, though he, he doesn't see play, Uther is like upper upper tier diamond skin in terms of how I, good I it looks. I will say, I, from running him in PVE comps, uh, his BM gets really old really quickly compared <laughs> to some of the other diamonds, but it's definitely the coolest art in my opinion. Oh, yeah, that's like a, the crazy like spirit, like angel Uther yep, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a cool it's one. It's really cool. It's like ascended uther or something it's it's got like a name i don't know yeah no it's it's a whole thing it's really cool but you know there are actually a lot of other cool things we have to talk about here first of which i figured we'd talk a little bit about the recent event right you know we were all all four of us were kind of involved in one way or another we had mullahu hosting the stream casting the event doing a great job with dragon oh, yeah. rider sorry man <laughs> Sorry, you no, did an I, amazing job. That's where I, I have be. feedback. I oh, have sweet. feedback. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, l let me read it again. Um, but <laughs> I, I will give that to you. No, uh, I only you. watched the um, the semifinals, mm -hmm. and okay. I made it's like I watched the the VOD with uh, you and Dragon Rider. Mm -hmm. um, I made a lot of notes, some about the game and <laughs> also the the casting, which was great. Nice. Um, 
but uh yeah that took about three hours <laughs> yeah. just to, just to write it up mm -hmm. it not to write it up. i was i was watching it and making notes sure, and then yeah. going back mm -hmm. and then you know i'm looking at my play as well and also oh. just I wanted to talk to you as well, and I was like, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to talk to Malahu. I'm going to talk to Dragon Rider, uh, Dawn. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I want to give them something as well. They did a great job. So you 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 appreciate feedback. I know yeah, that yeah. because you're a streamer as well. You're a content creator. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'll read my notes as we're going through this. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you. No, I'd appreciate that. That'd be great. Awesome. Yeah, so super fun event. If you don't know, uh, this was basically sponsored by HS Replay, uh, put together with in the uh, No Pros Here Discord. It was a $1,000 prize pool, so that was really exciting. Biggest event we've seen in Mercenary so far. So that was super duper hype, was a really interesting format. A lot of really good players competing in the event too. I think total number of players uh, after uh, check-in was about 35, so pretty decent turnout. Um, I think that 32. was- 32. 32? Yes. I, I know because uh, I went through all of them <laughs> to try and get to uh, the data behind uh -huh. it. At, oh, no, I am so sorry. Here I am going on about all of the data I crawled through, and I'm actually wrong. Uh, 35 was yeah. the correct answer. Let's go. Well I thought so, because I originally yeah. thought it was more, and then someone corrected me. Wow. So I am having a rough night. <laughs> My own article, just I'm misquoting yeah. myself. Yeah, no, I and I did want to mention that. So uh, Tankster actually did a great little write-up on the No Pros Here website about the event, taking a look at some of the deck lists and stuff. You want to tell us a little bit about that, Tankster? Yeah, so let's let's uh, talk through it a little bit. So just a reminder for everyone, the format was a um, best of three single elimination bracket, uh, which is usually better for the bigger tournaments because as we found out from our popper tournament double elimination can drag especially mm -hmm. if you have a bracket mm -hmm. reset um mm -hmm. however the the new interesting piece of this format is competitors submitted six mercenaries that they had to start and then uh the loser of the first set of the best of three uh, got to switch out up to four mercs with any mercenary in their collection and then could switch equipment as well. They were not locked into their equipment. So it led to some really interesting strategies, um, which, you know, we all uh, talked about, I think, ad nauseum. Mullahu obviously doing a great job uh, casting and kind of diving into the head games, which is always my favorite part of, of your casting to listen to, Mullahu. <laughs> but uh, it was interesting <laughs> because we saw a pretty decent breakdown of uh, roles right that were brought so we had roughly equal fighter protector casters that were brought um jaina varden Tyrion, uh almost 30 percent of the field for uh mm -hmm. first three mercs off the bench and the most popular backline was hands down nature uh, with malfurion brucon cookie uh mm -hmm. and then uh, after that you start to get in some three-way ties but it was very interesting to see the fact that almost everybody brought a uh, meta deck i mm -hmm. would say uh there was probably uh, i'm trying to remember i would say over 50 percent of players brought what i would consider to be a meta deck uh others what? chose to do something like dallas did which was bring uh, a meta deck with tweaks or like a combination of a couple of different lineups that we see commonly on ladder mm -hmm. um and uh, finally, we had a lot of homebrew. And it, you know, Dallas, I just saw your chat. That's a good question, actually. So, a meta deck, I would consider anything in tier one on HS Replay. Um, so, Frost, Tyrion, we see a lot, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is Jaina, Varden, or the Frost piece of that. Uh, we had a lot of uh, GVT, uh, Grom, mm -hmm. uh, Valera, and um, the infamous, yeah. the infamous <laughs> GVT. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, a great deal of that. And then, like those two decks together, made up uh, fifty-three percent of the field. So yep. by themselves, those two decks. Uh, which is pretty crazy to think about. And then there were a lot of variations on a theme, right? Valera, Grom, X, um, 
Valera stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a surprising amount, actually, of uh, kind of the old school Frost deck, the uh, Jaina Varden uh, Lich King. So yeah. really interesting to see. Uh, but so last thing about the meta decks, which I found super interesting, the only, again, meta, so tier one based on HS replay data, decks to make it into the top eight, there was mm -hmm. only one, five people of the top eight had this same deck. It was uh, the Tyrion, uh, Jaina, mm -hmm. Varden frontline, nature backline, mm -hmm. which was crazy to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and then of course we had Dallas that brought something a little spicier. Mm -hmm. So what did you bring <laughs> Dallas? What was your strategy here? Oh, my strategy. Uh, I've said or this just uh, many what times. And let, let me try and... Uh, can I have a moment, please? <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, no, uh, sorry. I, I should have been more prepared. Um, no, I, I, can answer, I can answer for Dallas. if Because we, we oh, talked man, about it. So we, we had a winner's interview after the tournament, which is super fun. It was, oh, like, nice. the first, it was the first yeah. tournament interview that I had ever really uh, done before. Do uh, oh, we cool. threw it together. You got it? You, you got the... Uh, you know, uh, okay. Your what do you want to say, Malahu? Uh, what, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say then, that... Because we can edit this part, right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> that's yeah, fine. Let's give zombie uh, one. Yeah, no, that's what I was... Two takes. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Right. Is that I, I, I didn't know that, really, because you were kind of saying that it was like Sensor's deck, right? Sensor is a player that people are, if you've heard of, familiar of, definitely mm -hmm. um, a well-known deck builder. That's what I was kind of saying in the tournament, too. Mm -hmm. I was like, when I think of people who are kind of associated with just deck building that is okay. kind of ahead of the game. I would have said that Sensor is kind of one of the newer names of that. Like Team America was kind of one back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, and then now we see like a lot of funky Sensor stuff. And I, I know right. that you work with them a lot and I hadn't seen the deck before, but it was kind of a combination of GBT and Frost Tyrion. And that's what I, I talked about in the tournament too. It's just like, everyone is bringing Frost Tyrion. You're the only one that kind of brought both. And it was the sensor brew. I actually thought that it was kind of built for the tournament itself because it fits so perfectly in what the format was of just being able to have this option both when you lost and when you won and no one else brought it. And so I love that. I thought it was amazing, but apparently it's a, it's kind of a deck that you've been playing a ladder. Right, right, right. Um, no, I'm, I'm glad you, you said that. Um, so I, it just made me realize that uh the three of you uh, except for maybe um zombies uh most likely don't watch my stream that often yes yeah, uh, because zones. of the time <laughs> yeah. zones yeah. right yeah. uh and uh so sensor he has been one of my uh followers since i started and when i early on when i started he he helped me a lot he was the one i had seen some of his decks before there was one deck that i really liked uh mm -hmm. at the start of the game that he made it was the counter um, Team America's uh, Frost uh, Tavish Frost uh, mid range deck there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a Sour Fang oh. Tavish. Yeah, that that one there, Varden. Um, and then from that point, I like I think I, I I chatted with him, and then he started following me, or he was already following me. I can't really remember. Um, mm -hmm. But um, he's he was usually in my chat all the time, and you know he he liked to. Uh, I hate this word, but like uh, I would test. No, I won't say it. Um, uh, he liked to test uh, out his decks. Like he'd like me to play his decks on mm -hmm. stream. So for for the longest time, I was playing Sensor's decks. I was playing Sid QT's decks. Mm -hmm. These are players that are Euro players, and they play in the opposite time zone to NA, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so the North American market, I would say, uh, doesn't really get to see them. I'm familiar with so it. So Sensor has been yeah. a great deck builder for a long, long time, and mm -hmm. he just hasn't been recognized until maybe now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I owe credit uh, to Sensor for a lot of my success. Like number one, um, you know, his, uh, his support has kept me going, not just his support, of course, mm -hmm. um, his and all the other followers uh, and subscribers. Um, number two, uh, he's been, you know, he's kind of been coaching me He's been giving me these hard decks to play all the time on stream, and it's not easy to do it while you're on stream. But oh, yeah. um, no, it's not. Yeah, like all these hard decks, and then yeah, number three. What was number three? Um, oh yeah, the deck. So the deck that I brought was Sensor's deck. Uh, he he developed this deck because he didn't like GBT either. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he still plays it because he's competitive. Yeah. But, um, you know, he would prefer not to play GVT just like myself. Like one mm-hmm. of the things I didn't want to do was bring GVT to the tournament. And actually, <laughs> funny mm-hmm. enough, he was telling me to to enter in with GVT. Oh, really? He was like, yeah, he was play- He was saying, go play three red. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll play your <laughs> other deck. <laughs> why, why didn't yeah. you want to do it? Other than just like didn't want to play well, like the Meta Slave deck or... That's part of it. But secondly, um, I-, I thought many people would bring that and they would be prepared yep. for that. So right. I thought mm-hmm. that seems like, uh, well, if you do do that, then, you know, you're kind of relying on a 50-50 to mm-hmm. win that game. A lot um, of 50-50s, right? Because you can win a bunch <laughs> yeah. of games. And you know what's interesting about that is is that seemed to be kind of the opinion most competitors had. A GVT only was 11% of the field. That's which really I thought surprising. was wow. crazy yeah. considering like zombies and I our prep was entirely based around how do you counter this deck. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Pretty much. Wow, it was only 11%, really. Yeah. Which so surprised many you because <laughs> yeah, fourth actually. Oh, wow. So it was um uh, Jaina Varden Tyrion was first, Valera Grom X was second, um other so homebrews um you know, random sort of things that we don't mm-hmm. see as much, mm-hmm. um, as well as old that old quote unquote meta decks like Shadow Samuro. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Grom Valera Thrall actually tied with just Valera comps, other Valera comps. So mm-hmm. very, very it low very representation. It, I believe it was ex- four players brought that in their starting lineup, wow. which was seems like. Oh. Really? That, that yeah, like weirdly really becomes like correct too. now. If like only that yeah. many people bring it, which is really weird. <laughs> like yeah. the, the field leveled the themselves sucks. out of it. it <laughs> exactly. Is, yeah. the, the mirror is all coin flips, right? No one wants to to gamble a, a purse this large on that many right. coin flips. But mm-hmm. the people who did actually kind of won the prisoner's dilemma <laughs> here, right? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's some fun kind of like that's something I love seeing in tournaments is you get people trying to like metagame each other and sometimes like you go a level too far and yeah. like, oh no i don't know where to stop with the metagaming right like it's like they now know, we know right? i'm probably gonna do this so i'll do this instead but what if they think i'm gonna do that and you can just yeah. go on forever with that right so yeah, it's, there is a point and yeah. there's someone i know that went uh too far with their preparation mm-hmm. i think it's honestly <laughs> the, it's a very real thing. Overthought. Like, I it's that. really tough to like get lost in those. Like like st- that doesn't happen in standard, right? Like this game absolutely has this quality of just like you do have to just like at some point decide where you stop in the this mind game back and forth and literally mm-hmm. figuring out your own personal stopping point. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if people if it would be a good thing for people to go like no 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 I'm gonna look at the like ladder of back and forth mental games and be like every single time. I'm doing level zero. I'm committing right now. I am always doing level zero. I'm never going to level myself or to be like, I'm always doing level one or I'm always doing level two. I literally think that people should probably figure out their own answer for that and then Mm -hmm. stick to it because you're going to waste time. You're going to mess up. You're going to lose equity by like trying to figure it out on the spot all the time. Oh, yeah. That's a great point. You were were going to say thanks to and I, I will say the the way I figured out how I was gonna stop at level one is by watching you casting Mullahu because you are so good at starting to unpack these mind games and I am terrible in the moment. <laughs> you can see like every tournament I've played in, you can see the exact moment where I go too deep and then I just drop the whole match yeah. and it gets bad. Um, but I think it's really interesting to think about this because now and and kind of going forward we have hs replay data for this which is not Mm -hmm. something we've had in the past so suddenly we have mind games that we can then balance out with actual data whereas Mm -hmm. you know a month ago it was me stealing the matchup chart (laughs) wallahu made on stream to try and figure out what to bring and that was back when beasts was still in the meta right (laughs) so ages ago ago. Yeah. yeah forever ago Oh man, one day beasts will rise again. <laughs> I'm always trying it. Just, it just got one. finished. Yeah, one more good. One. one more good beast. It would be awesome. No, yeah, it's, my, it's my limit test. They'll Pumps. come back, I think. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. and maybe 
maybe depending on how the meta develops, if we see a bunch of casters coming out to counter new things like local R, I can uh, help. Who knows, right? Like, who knows what could happen? You know, I we could know. see we dip, we could see different things. Um, but you know, that's a good it's a good little segue here to new things. We got the training grounds, so I thought that would be kind of a cool first thing to talk about before we get into talk about the new mercenaries and all that fun stuff. So training grounds, they're here. They cost a hundred gold if you want for one slot. If you want a second slot, two hundred gold will get you that upgrade, and that is what you get. Basically, it's a passive leveling mechanic, and you just throw a merc in there. They level passively. Um, I believe the max time is twenty-five hours, so you can leave them in there for up to twenty-five hours. When you're ready to gain the XP, you just go in, click the box, gain your experience. You can continue to leave them in there for more XP, or you can take them out. To take them out, you click the box when it is counting down, that 30-second countdown after your deem XP. It's very not clear with the <laughs> UI. I've had like 10 different people ask me about it, and I was confused myself. So I want to let people know about that. But it's it's something that you know we've talked about a little bit before with the leaked information. Um, but now we you know know everything about it. We know. Does it have anything to do with coins? It is purely level based. Um, but one thing I didn't really think about before that I think was on, it might have been your stream, Dallas. I don't know. It was on some one of the mercenary streams. Uh, someone mentioned that this is actually great for cross server collection building. For like, we just had this big event, and I know there were a lot of people, great players on EU who wanted to compete. But unfortunately, mercenaries collections, they're just, right. they're not cross server, right? So you, and the grind is already ridiculous, right? Like I, I'm getting tired thinking of starting an EU account <laughs> in this mode. My God, um, yeah. <laughs> so, but the fact that you could get a ton of grinding out of the way of just getting the characters from that level one to level 30, just by passively tossing them in there and going back, clicking a button and then leaving again after like a day, if that's a good way to do it, that's that's awesome. And I know Tankster did some experimentation with it, so I think he has some actual data for us on what do you actually get out of the training grounds in terms of time for XP. Yes. So listeners, as I promised you, I, uh, you know, I said, hey, don't buy your packs, save that gold, and I will let you know if it's worth it. And I'll tell you right now. The answer is almost definitely probably if you have any mercs that are not leveled that are competitive. So mm -hmm. it, the 25 hour cap is not a, I, I call it a soft cap. All you have mm -hmm. to do is go in and, and poke the merc. You just have to touch their XP bar. You don't even have to take them out and put them back in. So it does oh. not accumulate per merc. Uh, it only is really just Blizzard saying, you have to log in roughly once a day and wave to your mercs. The other thing that I realized was an assumption that I had that I, I didn't even bother to test until like uh, you know a couple of days into the patch was you can still have that merc in your party while they're in the training grounds. It's mm -hmm. not like uh, Pokemon Daycare where you have to leave the Pokemon behind yeah. and it stays. So that was something, a, a silly assumption I took from another game. But here's the good stuff. I put Sinestra in exactly at 10 a.m. Pacific time when the patch dropped. Uh, it is, as of this recording, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on Thursday the 27th, and my Sinestra is 29 and a half. So, rough estimate. She's got a little bit more to go, but I'm going to say definitively 60 hours or less to take a merc from 1 to 30, which honestly is better than I would have expected. I was really worried it was going to be a week, but less than three days to passively level a merc or two sounds awesome to me. And so the hardest part was not, you know, playing her <laughs> for the first day and a half before I realized yeah. I was totally wrong about that. But Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Uh, really good news to hear. Uh, I'm happy with that as well. I am too. I will say there are some bugs still, mm -hmm. and at the time of this recording, um, 
the hot fix has just begun rolling out. If you are one of the uh, unfortunate folks uh, like Mullahu who put a uh, <laughs> free to play curse, do not man. own, yeah, <laughs> who put a merc you do not own in to try and level them or something silly like that, and it froze on you. Uh, by the time you're listening to this podcast, that hot fix should be out. Uh, if not, you are being encouraged by all of the community mods to go um, let them know on the forum so they can help uh, take direct action. I yeah, think that's mine great is well. live right now. I'm clicking oh, the button yeah. and it is now active. So the hot right. is already starting to hit wherever East Coast oh, great. USA. Um, that's good feedback for Blizzard, by the way. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, time-wise. good job there. Oh yeah, we we try and give them them some feed, all, all kinds. Or whoever of feedback, was right? the dev that yeah. um yeah I, I'm I'm I have some feedback as well. It's not going to be all positive. So <laughs> about the training grounds. <laughs> Uh, just not just about the training grounds. <laughs> just cause it. It's not that high on the priority list, but um, yeah, there there are definitely mm. other other issues that uh, are higher up there. Yeah. But we will we'll we'll get there eventually. <laughs> but and let's let's all remember that there is a big quality of life patch coming. Yeah, the it next has one. been teased. We are fairly certain it's the next one and coming with the mini set, um, mm-hmm. or the prep patch for the mini set. So yeah, whichever. You know, okay. Fingers crossed that yeah. uh, uh, there's some goodness in there, like uh, you know, <clears throat> some coin fixes. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I think that's hopeful, but it's probably it too is, hopeful. It's hopeful. It's probably too optimistic. Uh, isn't it? I Get think they have hopes. to. I'm. I well, well, we can just address it. I. I think. I, I think next patch for me. Keep moving. I feel like we've been nice and patient. You know, I've been really not trying to harp on it too much. But I swear, every patch it just it feels worse. They're moving the time. goalposts each time. Like, yeah. uh, but the, no, no, they ha- they aren't. They aren't. They um they haven't communicated, uh, no. what they were going to do, and they haven't yeah. given us a time frame, no. uh, and that's feedback, by the way, um, <laughs> because I have been telling my viewers like, you know, it's coming. Just wait for the next one. Just wait for the yeah. next one. You know, and I've gotten to that point where I'm not going to say that anymore. And I'm gonna tell Blizzard right now, you either communicate what you're doing, um, or, well, firstly, no, you definitely should be communicating. We we need to know, and mm-hmm. we have been very patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, enough is enough. I have been very optimistic and positive up until probably a couple of weeks ago, but now I'm going to voice my opinion, and I think it is time. And I have spoken, t- and I don't wanna say, who I spoke to, but I was very unhappy with the response that I received from someone at Blizzard. Um, and it's regarding their communication um, policy. I'll just say that that's, that's what I'm gonna call it, okay? Mm-hmm. I disagree with that. Um, and if they can't see that, uh, look, look at Square Enix. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yep. yeah. that's, and just that's look great. at Square Enix. Model, emulate what they're doing because what they're doing is working their player base their community is very happy i have seen what they've done as well i'm very uh, impressed i'll say that well and i want to add one thing to because i think that's a great point model emulate iterate you are different companies we understand Mm -hmm. that we're not expecting Mm -hmm. you to be square enix make it work for you but there are you know square enix is one example of a really good style of communication that mm-hmm. isn't necessarily over promising or you know whatever you want to call it so make it work for team five not even for blizzard for team five mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 always tricky and i think it's one of those things where um i th- at least how i can imagine things i feel like they're uh the way things kind of work corporate structure wise is there's not a lot of justification from like you know the suits to like hey what are we really getting out of these uh these positions that uh communicate and however we do i it is notable to say communication on the whole for hearthstone has definitely improved a lot over the years i think it's just Mm -hmm. tricky because now there's so many different avenues of hearthstone with all the different modes i think it's just like just as one player trying to make content for it it's a ton to keep up with so i can't imagine even if they do have a good community person how you can just manage to keep up with all the different 
aspects of the community because there's there's so much of it now right like we have you have standard players you have wild players you have battlegrounds which is gigantic now you have duels which has got a bunch of changes and has seen kind of a bit of a resurgence you have mercenaries mm-hmm. you have arena which is actually getting huge now because i think summit started streaming it and he's a huge <laughs> oh, streamer yeah. never so heard of that one <laughs> yeah so it's like it, there's there's a ton to all these different game modes and it's like i know i couldn't reasonably even if there was like the best communications position person out there i couldn't expect them to keep up with all the different community stuff given they're like seven or eight different modes so it'd be great if we could get if there could just be more you know people to do that but realistically i don't think that's a change we're going to see until at the earliest like the the potential you know changing of hands of the business with microsoft in a year year and a half because they they have a different corporate culture and even though they're obviously about making money uh i i think they're going to handle things a little bit differently than activision hopefully um, so it's it's just something to think about and you know communication is important I mean I was a communications major in school I'd like to think I know a thing or two about communication and <laughs> I feel for a lot of the mercenary devs because like if you're a developer and you know it's like your job is to develop the game it's like basically a whole another job you're signing up to if you decide you want to be the kind of person who interacts and provides information for the community and it is not always a pleasant job because, you know, you suddenly become the target of people's frustrations, even if it's nothing to do with any design sh- decisions you've made or um, anything you've even had to do with. Right. Like, so I think it's a very tricky position. And that's why, you know, I think we haven't gotten as much communication because as we've seen a little bit in the past, you know, sometimes when we're given a little bit of information, some people just get upset before you even know what the information is and it's just it's a it's a difficult thing to deal with in in modern gaming i'd say like if i was in that position i would not sign up to do that (laughs) like i i just perfect perfect segue (laughs) not even a segue a a brief aside okay i will i am 100 percent unironically I will take that position if we need it. I am, I'm literally make. I'm. I'm no joke. I have a whiteboard downstairs, and the beginning of a massive thesis, just document master's thesis. I don't know what it is to bring all of these to Blizzard, and I want to start talking to some Blizzard people about it because I think a year out from now, right? This is kind of a year from now is the projection of when mercenaries, in my opinion, will be like completely overhauled, completely borderline perfect, and just godlike. You got to start doing that work now, but Blizzard, I will probably be talking to you soon. That's all I'll say, but uh, I I am, that's what Dallas is like. I'm now kind of like stopping telling people to like, just keep holding on. I think you know that the sky has fallen when I finally (laughs) stop telling people to be optimistic (laughs) about it. So as soon as I die, then everyone I think can give up, but I will hopefully (laughs) try to hold on. Uh, But yeah, it's, I mean, it is truly just an unenviable position from them i i still say that they should be making a netflix documentary about what the heck is going on with mercenaries i would watch that in a second because you know that's just insane with the backdrop of all the activision stuff with all the lawsuit stuff all the strikes making not having a dedicated team having this crazy new game out of nowhere have not really knowing right like what the community would even break within your game i think that's why it's partially taking so long for them to do things respond to things even understand things is because they had to like give it to us. They did give us the toy. We had to smash it in a million pieces and then they had to take it back and be like, oh, okay, they, this is what it is. These are your problems with the toy and then come back. So I think it is just a completely, completely different world that it's not like Blizzard, it's not like WoW. It's not like Hearthstone. It's, it's nothing like Blizzard has ever done before. So that's why I'm particularly sympathetic, but uh, I wonder, I'm still hopeful. Would you, Mola, who would you say yeah. it's like unannounced survival game? It could be. <laughs> it is like some kind of unannounced survival game. Yeah. I mean, hey, uh, I, I, I don't think they can they should like they can't make any excuses no. uh, just own it oh right. i'd love that if they were just tell like, us what happened we don't know anything but like this is we're trying to do this like yeah. hope a- any information right i think that's kind of your point dallas right is like for the mercy i've said it before like and anything. they've done it in the sorry sorry Molo, no, you're good. um I, i've said it before and i think they've done it in the past with the, the previous game maybe mm-hmm. uh, probably like uh 
I believe like Mercenaries was not um, a finished product when it when it launched, mm-hmm. right? And I think yeah. that wasn't um, Paul's decision or the devs' decision. Uh, it was, you know, I was Upstairs. forced on them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pretty yeah. much. And, you know, like they should be caring about the, the quality of their product. Or communicate and that we it's very at least dis- did half baked, right? Like it, yeah. one or the yeah. other, but obviously they yeah, just put probably a decided beta tag there. Exactly. Beta yeah. tag there. I yeah. talked about that I mean, a lot that's before. what they did with Heroes of the Storm. Remember mm-hmm. that? Like we all got access to the it was pretty much an open beta, and it was in open beta for like a year. It and then like it launched and then he like two years after that we got hots 2.0 or whatever it was Mm -hmm. like this is not unprecedented for blizzard i mean we don't even have to look to another game they did it with battlegrounds yeah like (laughs) yeah it's beta for until now right like it only just like last month came off of beta tag but i think uh like what dallas said i think the the i think we all agree on this i think it's definitely a decision where that needed to come out for the end of that year to meet those you know quarter goals from the the upstairs marketing revenue people right and i think i think the reason you know they didn't put a beta tag on that is because well you're selling these 50 dollar uh pre-order bundles for a beta i think that that i think that would rub people the wrong way and it's kind of funny because I think they've focused on the wrong thing there. I think Depends. that is, I think people would have been less bothered about pre-orders for a beta if they were excited to play it. And as we know, yeah. initial mercenaries reveal did not go the smoothest with the greater Hearthstone player base. So I think I, it already I partly agree hard. with you, zombies. Yeah. I partly agree with you. Um, Yes, uh, I think, uh, w- what was it that you said? Um, something that you said that made me think like, oh, the, they wanted to sell the, the, the beta. Packs, um, yeah. yeah, the packs, right. Um, the pre-order bundles. You know, they were charging the, 50. Yeah. I think mine was what higher than that. It was 60 yeah, or probably. 70. I can't remember. Yeah, it was conversion. But um, look, it all just depends on the communication. Like if they would have communicated that, told us what they were going to do. Hey, you're investing into this. Mm -hmm. you know this is what we want to build you know get behind us and if you know if the well they're not going to say this part but basically if the higher-ups are going to see that you know people are willing to invest in it then it's going to continue to succeed Mm -hmm. um but yeah like i said again it depends on the communication and what they did is just and what they continue to do and they've done in the past is you know they're they're basically being disrespectful to the player base to the community by launching these unfinished products and you know making their customers dissatisfied and frustrated um you can hear it in my voice right i don't <laughs> normally speak like this um because honestly I, my patience has almost worn out mm-hmm. almost and i'm I'm, con- I'm considering another game to play yeah because of this but I will wait for the next patch, but I'm not going to go into this this cycle, you know, of constantly um, being promised nothing because they don't communicate. <laughs> it's like a bad relationship. You're just like, what? Like, when am I supposed to yeah, break up? I didn't want to go I there, but I don't understand, right? I mean, <laughs> but I mean, you're you're totally right on a certain level, especially as someone. Maybe I can only keep up my optimism because I haven't bought bundle after bundle for this game, right? Like, I could not. Oh, right. I would probably okay. be giga yep. tilted. If the, oh, all bad. of this was happening, but I was ripping money into it, like that, I would definitely have a different perspective on it, right? And so I am mm-hmm. with my own, I'm not without my own biases when it comes to this kind of stuff. And so, no, I mean, I think you're right. I think this next quality of life patch is uh, one of, maybe one of two like make or I break said, moments in the near future that are like, I said I the last one something. was the make or break. Like <laughs> yes. this, yeah. this next one you. for me is really it. Okay, there and, you go. And, uh, yeah. I might go play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Dallas, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that, to be honest, because, you know, I was so pumped for these mercs to drop, but going in and trying to grind them out this uh, week, and, you know, I, I did, uh, I had like 30 packs reserved, I mm-hmm. bought, uh, you know, one of the bundles, uh, and I I still can't play with any of the new mercs. I just got Lokalar into mm. the fighting pit 
today, like mm -hmm. an hour before we started recording, at, because that was as soon as I was able to do something with him that wasn't just him falling over. And no amount of yep. packs is going to fix that, even if I wanted to throw, you know, a absolute crap ton of money yeah. like you would do in standard to have a full set on day one. Well, so. Yeah. That's that's like the big issue, right? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, Rarin put out a video a few days ago outlining his issues with mercenaries, and he actually covered a lot of the stuff we're talking about here. I think he did a great job with it. Definitely recommend checking it out. Check it out. Uh, it's uh, it's he just really the the big thing. He makes a great comparison, like you just brought up standard. When you have a full regular collection in standard, you buy a pack of cards. You know, well, I'm probably getting cards I already own unless I get lucky with a golden or something. But yeah. those cards have an inherent value because they can be used to create other cards. And those can be any other card, right? And so it really feels like the thing that's missing here is like a, a wild card kind of coin, right? That can just basically be used for anything. Like basically an arcane dust system where it's like you could have your extra coins convert into a coin that can be used for any of that rarity, right? Like rare coins... Yeah. 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, I don't care what it is, right? The, the ratio just convert into a coin that can be used for any rare mercenary, then epic, then legendary, so on. Something simple like that would go such a long way because pretty much anybody who's played mercenaries since, you don't even have to have played from the beginning. You could have started like a month ago, and I guarantee at least on like one or two characters, you have them maxed out and you're still getting coins from them. And those coins are big useless they do nothing and yeah. they're actually worse than useless because getting them is actively preventing you from getting the stuff you need and Rowan said it in the video but you actually it gets worse <laughs> the, the further you progress like and how how is that a good gameplay design <laughs> where you actively get punished for basically completing your collection and maxing your mercenaries because now packs become worse and worse and worse and I mean, we even saw this the, the other night on your stream, Dallas, when you were doing your initial openings and stuff. And the thing that one of the things <laughs> that really blows my mind oh, man. with with I know it's a bad memory. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Those are but and I, I know I know you're going to have some feelings about this. The, the thing that blows my mind is, uh, you know, we have the technology for duplicate protection in standard. We clearly have the technology for duplicate protection in this game because it's enabled on regular mercenaries as you're acquiring them. You can't get it. Anyway, the, the whole thing with it is it blows my mind that at the very least, there is not duplicate protection for packs and or, or not packs, uh, portraits and or legendaries. Mm -hmm. Like oh, there is man. literally no protection whatsoever doesn't exist you could get the legendary in two packs you could open 20 packs get nothing it no pity timer no pity timer it doesn't exist in mercenaries oh, that too, and yeah. it, it's what's even more messed up is so if you're someone who's in like dallas's position where you have most of the you have like all the portraits before this new batch right if i recall correctly i think you had them all uh or, like, i don't think i all. have like two gold Okay, but like the vast majority, anyway. Yeah. But we saw in your stream when you were opening the packs, you are missing some epic and legendary portraits, but you could actually just roll that portrait for something you already had and get coins instead. There's no, it doesn't, yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah. it doesn't like uh, only give you portraits you don't have. It's a diff. The rolling works differently, and that just like. I, I, I couldn't believe that. Oh, when it's I saw it's it. a it's horrible just, experience. It's, I'm telling yeah. you, like, just look at my VOD. It's I, really I was bad. very, very emotional. It's bad. <laughs> it's, and um, honestly, I wish I, I had recorded uh, my opening experience uh, about a month ago when I was trying to max out Vanessa. Um, I Because I, I did spend, like, I think 100 bucks on packs. And I don't wow. remember how many coins I came away with, but it was less than 300. Yeah. Oh, I have the like and that the feels notes. Terrible. Of, hang on, mm -hmm. what did I get? <laughs> Dallas is pulling up the stats. These are some of the. Uh, okay, I didn't do the math for the second part, but um, I'll just paste it in the chat. All right, let's see what we got here. So, okay. so that was seventy-seven packs, the top mm -hmm. one, and I just need a mi like the the second was another sixty packs. Uh, I need a minus um, some stuff, and the wow. asterisks were oh from. God. 
Blinda, I got the bundle. Uh, Galvanga mm-hmm. was the epic bundle. Uh-huh. Uh, and the Rathian, I think those the 300 coins, was it? For 695 or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pr- they, so, yeah, it was probably the, a, yeah, numbers bundle, or less. Whatever, yeah. from, from 77 packs, like, uh, I'll calculate it. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. It, but I mean, it's horrible. It's like, horrible. Yeah, less than like fewer than 200 coins per each of these mercs in over 70 mm-hmm. packs. Like, that's, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's outrageous. That's, mm-hmm. if, Disgusting. Like, you, could, you could do so much more with that in pretty much any other mode, which is something that makes mercs packs feel especially bad as you get your per- collection done. Because if you Honestly. play other modes, it's like, why am I going to spend gold on this one? I should save this for a standard pack. That's going to give me more value. Or the mini set that's coming out. Yeah. You know, like I exactly. I saved 2,000 gold that had these packs had just a little bit better. Like one of those things we just rattled off, do protection, you know, wild, whatever it is. I probably would have dumped my whole stash. And then I would have been shelling out real money for the mini set, which I can only assume is, you know, Blizzard is a company at the mm-hmm. end of the day. They, they do have yep. to turn a profit and I can respect that. But... You know, give me a gold sink I want to invest in, so then I do throw money at it. Yeah, and and stop making it mercenaries upgrades. Give us a different currency for that. Oh I'm going to keep yeah. bringing that up. It's so <laughs> stupid that you shouldn't, if you want people to play a new mode, you shouldn't make them choose between the resource for developing their collection and playing this new mode. Because if I'm a free-to-play player who barely has, you know, one, two, three decks together... I care a lot about that hundred gold going towards a pack because maybe it'll get a legendary I need or an epic. Whose enemy. decision was that as well? I want to know Man. that. <laughs> I I have guesses. Yeah, it's it's okay. there, there's a lot to be Let's improved talk. in this mode, and <laughs> we know it can happen, right? Like it. I I'm a Hearthstone boomer. I've been around since almost the beginning. Like I, I joined <laughs> right before uh, right before Max and. Hearthstone, oh my god, the economy for this game, if you think it's bad now, like the main game, it it was not even recognizable. But that's not an excuse. The no, it's not an we've excuse. Come, that's like, my point, was, though. We, and, we've and come I, a long you know way, Zombies, so I think they can do it we again. Have. We have, but the whole point of coming a long way is that we learned things along I know. the way, and so there is absolutely <laughs> no reason to start back at zero, yeah. because that's what this that's is. What's Opening so Merch Packs right yeah. now is starting at zero when Pretty Hearthstone much. launched, and that is really sad, because you're standing up and saying, I learned nothing. Or, <laughs> worse, you're saying my players are stupid enough to not care. <laughs> no, it's yeah, true. going back to disrespect. Yep. It's it's true. It's just it's so, frustrating, because I think, you know what it's like? It's like, I feel like a big reason why Hearthstone was like that in the beginning was because it was the premier digital online card game at a time where not a lot of competition right. existed. There really wasn't much in the way of competition for Hearthstone early on. Eventually, yep. we got some competitors, but it, it and as we saw with that, when competitors came, prices changed. We we got things changed. So I think maybe that I, I'm not saying it's a good justification. I hate it, but I think mm-hmm. that could also be a possible justification of there's there's not really a lot of direct competition to them in what mercenaries is outside of maybe fringe mobile games like so but even then it's kind of different i mean i don't play a lot of those games so i can't speak exactly to how similar or different it is but i do know like gotcha s games are like popular and stuff um it's just i think that is part of the justification to them uh, like corporate wise is just we can get away with this because you know there's what are they gonna do go play this somewhere else <laughs> like well it, mm. no agreed and i don't want to be all doom and gloom on this episode because yeah. it, it things you know there's some there is some exciting stuff to True. talk about so 100 uh let's should we move on to meta or dallas did you have a final thought uh hang on uh let me give me one moment it, sorry Oh, that's not good. Uh, no, that's. I'm just going to start they're, they're, calling okay. you out randomly, I think. I think that seems like a good, uh, you know, back and forth. I mean, the, there are, I think we we covered some of the main um, issues. Mm-hmm. The the coins I see as a huge priority. Coins and packs, I should mm-hmm. say. Um, that needs to be addressed. 
uh, they need to communicate what they're going to do there. Um, what else? Uh, one thing I wanted to say is like, do we like, because a lot of people see uh, mercenaries and they say, oh, it's a gacha game. You know, mm -hmm. I was seeing it that way as well, right? Um, and, you know, with regards to the grind, how much money you have to spend, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Why do we have to have, be a gacha game? Yeah. You know, we don't need to be a gacha game. We can change the strategy and Blizzard can still be profitable. Yeah, definitely. You know? 100% like, agree. The grind that happens each month, uh, I don't think many players enjoy that. I think I would enjoy it, but that's just me. But the majority of the current player base uh, probably doesn't enjoy it. And yeah, um, yeah if they want to you know, um, capture that gacha game market, I mean, they've got heaps of competition there. And there are other gacha games that are doing a way, way, way better job. So if you want to try and catch up, go for it. But mm -hmm. looking at your track record, unless Microsoft can come in and, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a, a hand, helping hand from Big Bro, um, you, you might be able to do it. Probably not. But um, anyway, <laughs> they've destroyed yep. their reputation is all I want to say. Well, um, I, for one, fully welcome our new microsoft overlords uh, <laughs> me too and, <laughs> and with that why don't we get to some of the uh things that the new patch did bring yep. uh yep. you know we have new bounty areas we have uh new bounties we have the heroic item change zombies where do we want to start with all of this we, we we did the rundown last week but you know what do we want to like where do you want to go man <laughs> that's a good question so uh I guess we'll just start with like the bounty area. This is you now first time we got a new bounty area instead of just it being added on to Blackrock with some new bounties. Mm. So that was kind of cool. Uh, I was happy to see that. I hope we get more of that kind of stuff. I think it's more interesting when we get uh, kind of a new area. I do wonder if the next patch will include another one of those or if it'll just be an expansion to Alterac kind of like we got uh, for Blackrock before. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, but I, I enjoyed the the fights and stuff more this time around. I don't know if there's any particular reason why. Um, I do think it's important to remember uh, that even though all of us are very PvP focused players, I think there are more people out there than we might think uh, play this game, just kind of casually PvE. Like, okay. I have a friend of mine who recently has gotten into it, and he's taken a very casual approach to it. Um, I've given, I've gave him a little bit of advice here and there, but really all he's been doing is just casually doing some PvE content, leveling up his dudes, and he just has been enjoying the progression sense. So, like, uber casual, doesn't even, hasn't even, like, I think, thought about the, the PvP aspect. I'm not even sure if he knows it exists yet, <laughs> outside of, like, the fact that I do videos for it. So it's like, it's, I think it's important, important to remember that I think those people exist. So like, and I think those people could also be putting a lot of time and potentially money into the game. I don't know how many of those uber casual peoples are going to pony up money for coins. I think they'd rather just use, you know, grind it out playing the game. Cause that kind of is the game for PVE without a proper end game. Um, but I think we're get I, they already specified that's one of the things they're going to be working on after the next patch. It's going to be kind of developing that PVE endgame, which is good because I think right now um, players kind of want different things depending on what they enjoy, PVE versus PVP. And I think, you know, eventually we'll get to a point where we kind of want the same things more as the game gets, you know, more developed and more stuff comes along um but what do you guys think about the uh the bounties i'm <clears throat> curious i mean i think the fact that the bounties are so again if like for me again yeah like you said i'm super pvp focused i literally after valera came out i did not do a, i didn't go into a bounty i didn't do a daily i didn't do anything and i just played pvp and i could and that was great and so like that experience was really important to be able to have i think but I do think that we have to make PvE matter. There is, like, like so Dallas is saying, like, I, he doesn't think the majority of players really enjoy the grind. I think, oddly, the the majority of players probably are okay with Maybe they don't enjoy it, right? It could be better. But the people that are playing are probably the ones that can stomach the grind as is. 
And so I'm definitely a huge proponent of making the PVE matter. Because for me, it really didn't. Like before mm -hmm. this change to the heroic items, where you could get your task seven equipment, quote unquote, from the actual bounties themselves, like from a heroic, I think that's a great precedent personally, because I literally did not care about PVE. I would not touch it. You couldn't mm -hmm. make me touch it unless I wanted to sit there and grind out coins. But then if I did, I would go to one of my cheese strats that doesn't involve any of the new content. So mm -hmm. I, I actually do think it's a very good precedent moving forward to make the new content. You have to do it to make some of your new mercs sick. You don't have to make them like their best equipment isn't even necessarily hidden behind that, right? It's not like the mm -hmm. olden days where the Task 7 was like very clearly the best equipment. The other two equipments are just like increase your damage by four, add a slow. And then the Task 7 was like completely fundamentally changed the way that your Merc is played, but the way that your comp is played, just everything, right? They moved yeah. away from that. And I do think that PvE mattering more is a good thing. Apparently a lot of people have a big problem with the fact that the Task 7s Again, quote unquote, are loud behind this. But one of the things that stood out to me is that you can just farm multiple Task 7 equipments at the same time now. I think that's a good thing. You can go down a bounty, get the heroic done, get an equipment from it, and then have spent the mysterious strangers on the way on someone else's equipment. Before you couldn't really do that, it was kind of get one guy going at a time. Now you can do the new mercs while simultaneously working on tasks for your other mercs. I think it's a good thing. I'm hard pressed to see it as a truly bad thing. And I think it's the one big step forward in making the PVE matter that I think they are going to fix at some point. Like I said, there is PVE end game content, whatever that is. Um, so I'm, I'm a fan of it. I think it went pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Tankster? What do you, what do you think of it? I, I like it. Honestly, I, I got into this game for the, the PVE. I've talked before how much I enjoy some of like the, the solo, uh, games that, mm -hmm. that blizzard did i was a huge uh, slay the spire fan so when they were like we're taking dungeon runs and slay mm -hmm. the spire and we're slamming them together hearthstone style i was like this is going to be lit i had a blast running through the new bounties i've gotten everyone done both normal and heroic except for drakthar who is giving me a headache i had to go to the old guardian video for this one <laughs> and so now i'm ready i'm, I'm gonna take him down probably later tonight but it feels good to have that content and have it be interesting because it, zombies or, or dala I, somebody said uh, earlier that just thinking about grinding these new mercs just like turned your stomach and it <laughs> just makes you feel exhausted but I will happily take the less efficient grind and do all of the new stuff that feels like I need to think about what I'm playing and what I'm doing, and it very much does in the heroic modes, yeah. um, over the mindlessly AFK grinding Felwood 6, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't oh, want to... Or 1-1. Yeah, or yeah mm -hmm. I don't want to grind like that, right? I'm totally fine having to work through all the heroics before these guys are playable, because I'm playing the game, and we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. I want to play the game, not AFK the game, until I can go do PvP. Yeah, definitely. That's a that's a very good point. What about you, Dallas? What do you think? Sorry, just had to make sure I was off mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so no, firstly, uh, you brought up something, Tankster. Yeah, uh, I uh, I enjoy PvE. I find it very soothing. That's what hooked me, actually. I, I played really? PvE in Mercenaries uh, pretty much exclusively for the first month or so oh, since damn. launch. Like, I played a little, little bit of PvP, but that was just to get some chests mm -hmm. so I can max out my PvE. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, I find it relaxing. It's, uh, nice. it's soothing. I said that. Um, it's fun to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what they're, they're, they're trying to do, yeah. Like, some of the bounties are fun, but mm -hmm. uh, once you complete them, well, what is there, right? There's no reason and to go back, right? Yeah. Yeah, That's one it. one thing I'd like to see is there was a, I didn't get to play it actually, and I probably will do this on stream, is those puzzles. You know those puzzles? Oh, those are I, fun. Yes, the uh, yeah, Boomsday uh, solo. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was one of my favorite things they added from a solo content perspective and i will stop there because otherwise i'll keep going about these i'm <laughs> obsessed those were so much fun 
Yeah, we've actually they talked about that a little bit. Like that. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about the idea. Someone at some point, I didn't think of it. I uh, actually tagged them on Twitter because I, I commented on like one of Ixar's AMAs or something like that, and I was like, mm-hmm. someone else brought this to my attention. But oh my god, imagine a chess puzzle variant of Mercenaries. Nice. It's yeah. literally. Oh my god, that would be amazing. And th- like that's yeah. what like to me like, that's the I, that's the godlike end game pve Mm -hmm. like solve everything literally make it a daily puzzle give you rewards for it change the mercs for it spoil new mercs in it spoil new content in it make the bot like you have to design the bots to do it it's obviously a whole big thing to do right but to me that is the golden egg that is there it's just over there yeah but no sorry so keep going that's a really really sorry just one thing that that's a really neat point mohu because like i hadn't thought about some of that stuff before with uh what they can kind of oh what's the word what they can kind of do with um oh god i'm blanking on the 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 thing you just said oh what was it like doing new mercs or new new mechanics something about the karazan chess (laughs) we'll come back to you man yeah Yeah. uh it literally i had it we'll work it back around (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then oh no i got it 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 was the the daily that was it the daily Ah, uh daily thing so think about this like most roguelike type games right i know mercenaries isn't necessarily a roguelike but it has some similar elements right they made that pseudo slay the spire comparison in the beginning but a lot of those games have a mode where it's a daily challenge so there's a leaderboard and you compete with people and see who can do the best for that daily challenge and it's done off like a randomized seed so it's based off of something you know already in the game but there'll be some tweaks to it maybe it'll be uh, a different thing with the boss or there'll be a modifier to make things more challenging or you'll be on a timer whatever right but think about if for mercenaries pve there was something like that where it gave you a reason to play PVE every day or every week mm-hmm. or however long. Uh, you could just sign in and you're competing with everybody to see who can get maybe the highest score. Mm-hmm. Do a scoring system on damage or the or the best time or whatever yeah. it may be. But I think that that would be a really cool way to you know give people a reason to play the PVE like without having to make new content like all the time like mm-hmm. it could be mm-hmm. something that's a little you know pseudo randomized and generated so there are a lot of different outcomes for it without having to design you know a million different areas for the player to yeah, interact. to do it another out the valley or the warsong exactly. gulch expansion you have right. to design a whole thing for that no, so you just design one fight that's you just up. leaked the mini set Mullahu? i think that was a mini <laughs> <Maybe>. set <leak>. warsong <laughs> gulch that's, confirmed that's really neat though i didn't know you started with pve dallas that's that's mm. a, a fun fact like for me i had a totally yeah. different experience with i the pvp is 100 percent what drew me into the game i didn't really care much for pve at all but i watched some people play pvp and i was like this looks fucking sick like this reminds me so much <laughs> of pokemon in a bunch of ways and so i just ended up doing pve as a, a byproduct because but all it ever really has been, other than maybe my first initial run on release, was you know having some fun with it, and maybe the recent bounties I had fun with. But other than that, the PVE is it's an experience where it's generally easy enough to where I don't have to put any kind of thought into what I'm doing, yeah. and there's not any active reward really for putting additional thought into it, unless maybe you're doing the heroics. Sometimes you need to think a little there, but there's no reward for that, and I think just a small change that could go a long way give better rewards for some of this content like i would love if i was actually incentivized to go run uh lorkathar's uh bounty to go get coins for him i wouldn't have a problem with that maybe it takes a bit longer than some of the other methods but if you actually compensated me with an appropriate amount of coins for that time put in i wouldn't Mm. have a problem playing the game like that and i feel like that's how it almost should be designed right like you should yeah do the content for the character to level up the character. I shouldn't have to go do Felwood 6 or Heroic 1-1 for the 10,000th time to be effective about maxing my character once I've got all my tasks done. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just, that's something that really, the, there are a few things in Mercenaries, but that's one of the things that really sticks out to me as like a glaring oversight with the PvE. And it's like, I get you don't want to give like the whole game away for 
super quickly and everything um, but it's like you could do better than it currently is because right now the system is so bad with those bounties it's just I don't know a single person who does that who, who yeah. actually Agreed. goes through once you've done the content and you've got what you need nobody goes back and it's a shame because it's cool content it's like it's awesome. Like I, I, I love, love the it. new bounties. Like they've been, these new ones have been the most fun ones mm -hmm. I think we've got yet. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a real shame that they put all this time and effort into making them, and people play them once or twice and then have no reason to really do it again. Y'all, Drekthar is hard. All right, <laughs> he's hard and as I, shit. I, <laughs> yeah, oh, no. I, know, I love that. I love having yeah, to look at my mm -hmm. collection and go, how do I beat this? Just like we had to do in you know all of the solo yep. uh, content in regular Hearthstone, right? Mm -hmm. The the whole thing was okay. How do you beat this boss with the collection you have? And there are no like old guardian does a, amazing pve content if there's mm -hmm. other folks out there i'm not aware of them as much but there are no like i remember those right it uh, you do some pve content i'm doing it for you this can... one because now you need the pve i didn't do right. it before yeah. because, okay uh, that's fair because that's fair. you didn't really need it other than if I, if someone sh if someone tells me a cool kill i'll definitely feature that because those are fun I but I people just don't really like for, PvE content for the, as much. For the original solo content, I would have to go to Hearth Pond and see what everyone else was doing, and there was no one answer, mm -hmm. right? Drekthar, at the moment, it's you and Old Guardian come up when I search uh, Mercenaries Drekthar, right? <laughs> that's that's it. So, um, yeah. I, it, it, yeah, so there aren't a yeah. lot of... Uh, there aren't a lot of us mercenaries creators out there, but it's it's why we're a very tight knit community, right? Yeah. Heard. Well, once the puzzle mode, chess puzzle mode comes in, the PVE leaderboards and stuff, <laughs> that'll all change. And PVE Microsoft, getting fixed. Microsoft, yeah. get on this. Uh -huh. All right, it's, you it's got a cash cow here. <laughs> yeah, you got Master Chief, the new protector coming out. Yeah, nope. oh, that'll be great. We've, yeah, great. we've already Mi had the Minecraft Diablo, right? Steve, the, <laughs> the new fighter, super <laughs> pumped. Uh -huh. Spyro, Spanish, right? Spyro, yeah. we need a dragon. Spyro. Right? Ori, yeah, look at that. the crossover. Microsoft, you should hire us. Yeah, <laughs> look at all these ideas. I'll negotiate the contracts. <laughs> right. Oh, maybe, maybe one day, right? But that's that's actually some one of the first things that came to mind though when I heard the Blizzard acquisition. I was like, man, I could a hundred percent see Microsoft taking a different and better direction with mercenaries <laughs> than Activision. Yeah, I Blizzard don't think they're gonna allowed. get that down i think it might be a little bit of a pipe dream to think microsoft will have think, oh, they're not gonna control fix everything, over what right? <laughs> what team five is doing but it's no. it's fine to uh you know it's mm -hmm. it's fun to meme about uh do we want to talk meta before we sign off zombies yeah let's let's talk some meta stuff so obviously you know part of the reason we've talked so much about farming and everything this episode is because what do you think we've all been doing for the last two days <laughs> and the, there's a reason the frustration is growing is because it takes fucking forever to be able to play <laughs> these characters and i want to be able to put out videos trying them out for to like show people because how are you supposed to know what you're supposed to grind if there's like no you can't you can't see anything like i think the only content i've seen in terms of pvp is mayo put up a great video which i'll, I'll if i remember i'll throw that in the description um of him using uh local local r and absolutely dusting the leers with it like it was it, you know I, he should have tagged mm -hmm. it not safe for work because it was disgusting <laughs> it was not appropriate <laughs> it was and, and it was is like... currently the only merc that shows up on hearthstone replay oh really you go yes. right now to hearthstone replay and you sort by on? win rate local R jumps up to the top with a 70 <laughs> percent win rate right now again Holy obviously oh, insanely so, small sample size and brain definitely new, right yeah. but like Wow. So I, I sliced and diced this a little bit before Jesus. we started recording because I was really curious. Uh, like you said, Malahu, if you if you filter and you search all of you, you put the filters wow. the widest they can go, all MMR ranges, uh, minimum games one hundred, basically stretching a HSR to the limit of of the data it's consuming and and deems relevant. There is not enough data for any of the new mercs yet, except Lokalar. And that's probably because he's one of the rares, let's be honest. But it's also, <laughs> uh, like we talked about last week, it, it's easy to see where he can fit immediately. Whereas everybody else either brought a new comp with them, like dragons uh, or mm -hmm. fell. 
Uh, or is epic or legendary and a little trickier to get PvP ready. So, interestingly, 300 games recorded with this comp. Um, it is, lo and behold, it's it's Frost Tyrion, but instead it's Frost Localar. It's <laughs> the, the lead is Localar Jaina Varden. Uh, the back is the classic cookie Karen Diablo. Okay. And uh, it's looking pretty good. 300 games, not a large sample size, let's be clear. When you look at something like... Um, uh, uh, Frost Tyrion or GVT, you're looking in the range of 2,000, 4,000 games, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's that's thrilling for me as, you know, someone and Mullahu too, I don't want to leave you out of this because we mm -hmm. were so hyped for Low Color last mm -hmm. week. Yeah. It was... And we were right. And, and to, right. We were right! I love being right! It's my favorite! Mm. Oh, man. I, like, and I got him into the fighting pit. I got two games in before we started, and holy crap, guys. This is the Valera killer if you can keep him alive for more than a round. Man. And... Yeah, no, so I was going to say, I probably have the most experience. Yeah. I've probably played 40, 50 games with... Uh, local R in PvP at like 10k MMR. I went from part of it feels very weird. That's almost a completely different discussion we won't even get into, but um, I have been cheesing the ladder by having my local R in there. There is a very direct correlation to when I play with local R that only has one ability max and one equipment max. Mm -hmm. I was playing against people with level 25 Jiraxis, level oh, 17 Brightwing at 10k oh. MMR. I was playing against that. So I don't know if wow. it's a new change. I don't know if there's a problem. I don't know if it's a new part of the algorithm or whatever. But it Spicy. felt like I was cheating. <laughs> and so that could be another reason why the algorithm is so... Or why the win rate is really high. But my initial takes on local R are... Uh, yeah, super fun. Very interestingly random, right? An incentive to be slow. But... Yep. And it does go to town on the Valera comms. But hilariously, there actually is already a counterplay showing up where you can just choose to take all of the slow actions with Phantom Knives, like Battle Fury and For the Horde. If you're playing GBT, for example, oh, you really? actually get to set up, you don't really take that much damage, and then on turn two, you can still kill the Local R, but then there's a counterplay to that, where if they start doing that, Local R can use their second ability, go even slower than them, and then shoot Valera for like 80 or 60 or something like that, Jeez. and then it's a very yeah. different game. So I've already loved that there appears to be there was a Valera. Local R was supposed to kill Valera. It did. People started learning how to beat Local R with Valera. And then the Local R players started to learn how to beat the Valera players, beating the Local R players, while everyone else is also changing their decks in order to beat, in some cases, Local R. I've seen a ton of Nature. I've seen a ton of old comps as well, a ton of Shadow yeah. Smurrow, Nature Smurrow. Smurrow showing back up because these Janas mm -hmm. are popping up. And again, I wasn't playing with the Jaina comp, right? I was doing Local R Varden stuff. Um, like mm -hmm. some crazy, crazy stuff. There's scabs in the bench and like insane wow. shit. Um, Can I say one thing yeah, uh, yeah. when you finish? Sorry. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, but po point being that honestly, the, the initial experience with Local R has been pretty cool. He feels very counterable if you want to. And yep. even the decks that are supposed to get wailed on by Local R do have outs, right? But I think that this is kind of what we needed to attack the Valera percentage that is in the meta without nerfing Valera. So, so far, I'm okay with it. It's been pretty good in yeah. my experience. And and I yep. think before Dallas makes his point, I think we're going to see this really, really come up next week. And, mm -hmm. and listeners, there will be a, a lot more meta discussion next week because the, the bulk, the middle of the bell curve of our pvp uh focused players have not gotten any of these folks ready i just mm -hmm. got mine ready and i threw money gold and time mm -hmm. at him yeah dallas you had something oh yeah well to continue on from that thought i've only thrown money at it a little bit of time but um no you uh Malahu, you just reminded me of why i love mercenaries <laughs> one of the reasons why i loved it so i like to say something positive mm -hmm. um just how you were speaking about how, um, you know, uh, in Mercenaries, the meta was constantly changing mm -hmm. because everyone was constantly adapting and it made the game so much fun, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to find that equilibrium and then once we do, we, we counter that and, and it just keeps on going, it keeps on going. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the great thing about Mercenaries. And um, I don't know, was there anything else I needed to say about that? I mean, the MMR thing? Yeah. Oh yeah, the oh yeah, the MMR yeah. thing. Oh, 
we can save that or should we do it the, the only thing i'll <laughs> think i i don't think we have time to get into it but the point that i'll make yeah we won't it, get into think, it the, the, the point that i think kind yeah, of shows a before. problem is that right now if you went and looked at the eu top 200 leaderboard the players that are at fourteen thousand, which is the highest you can get almost the entire leaderboard is at fourteen thousand. There is an almost 200 way tie for first place. Like that alone shows you that the MMR system is scuffed beyond recognition and that it needs mm -hmm. yet another overhaul or some kind of tweak to the formula. But again, we won't get there for now. I'm yeah. sure that, that might be a huge quality of life thing, right? Hopefully it's not. We'd rather see some in-game quality of life changes rather than MMR kind of ladder based things, I would say. Because uh, at the end of the day, your ladder rating like doesn't really count for anything, do anything right now. You'll be 7K, you'll play against someone that's 13K. I was playing against, like I said, level 15 mercs or whatever, but um, right. yeah, definitely some odd, odd stuff in the uh, in the algos deep. Yeah, I think here. I think definitely that's something that can be worked on and improved. Like I was watching a little bit of the stream where uh, you were running into players with the lower level mercs, and it was funny. Uh, one of the uh, Twitter uh, accounts I follow that does Hearthstone decks, they post some mercenary stuff every now and again. And now with the, the rating system being so weird, they posted, this was so funny to me, they posted a comp that got to, I think, like 11K, and one of the mercs was level 28 or something. Jeez. And yeah. um, I was just like, city. what the fuck? It's, it's Bay City. That's what I, it, like, it's, um, in October, I was like, this game is going to just trap people with the information that you can technically see on paper. And then mm -hmm. it just means nothing or means completely different things. Mercenaries has a lot of tricky, like just labyrinths of information to, to weasel through. And it yeah. gets, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's just tough a weird it. thing with the algorithm, right? Because I think the intention is, you know, you want to pair up players with similar uh, collection. So make for mm -hmm. a balanced experience. But obviously we're seeing here <laughs> that that's not always the case. Um, and one important thing to know also about the 14K thing you mentioned is once you hit 14K, if I understand correctly, mm -hmm. your rank is like locked in. Like you can't you play. Can fall out of it. You, you, no, it's not that you no, can no, fall you out of it, but you okay. can't progress. If you play on 14k, you can't move yourself up that ladder. Uh, like, it's not like a no, rank I don't know what it's like based on actually. Them. That's what I've heard. Someone said it. Was yeah, that... someone said it was based on your battle tag. That's the order. Really? That in. would I'm be not... incredibly bad. That would be... I, I don't know how it <laughs> ranks. I don't know what the hierarchy is Hold on, I for that 14k yeah, thing. I thought it was. Yeah. I could be wrong, but uh, I, I thought it's not it, win rate. No, it's not win rate. It's it's. I thought how it worked was whoever got there first, you get your position, and you keep that. I think, I thought it might have even kept if you fell out as long as you got back to 14k. But I'm not positive. Oh, I haven't hit 14k, so I'm not really. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of the stuff about it. Again, it's a big Maybe issue. Maybe someone in the comments can uh, confirm that for us. Area. Yeah, <laughs> one of our... I mean, we have a bunch of 14K players now, right? So somebody, somebody's somebody got to be able to, to figure some I'll stuff out. Um, trip, we do know they are aware of the issue. We had a, a different developer actually confirm this. And it sounds like, from what I heard, uh, the, the direct mercenaries team is not who handles a lot of the MMR system. It sounds like that's a different like mm -hmm. general department for Hearthstone. So it sounds like it's something that, you know, the Mercs team is aware of, but they probably have to get oh, into contact with someone. They're siloed there as well. On the other team. <laughs> the yeah. Algo. Yeah. It's Blizzard IP. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so we won't go into all that stuff. But we do know that it is a problem, I think, especially for people who play a ton of PvP. It's a big problem and really hope we can see a fix because... Right now, we're four days off at the end of the season, and it's like this is going to be the second season in a row where it's basically invalidated the leaderboards, and I imagine that can't be working as intended when almost like half the time your game has been out, the final leaderboards just don't matter at all. <laughs> so it's just so much more of like a race instead of... It, yeah. It's actually just like it has this it weird is. PvE element, mm -hmm. right? Like the leaderboards almost have like you're just doing bounties. Like it is just... Can you beat them to 14k? Not mm -hmm. do you actually get there and then get in front of them or fight against them? It really and does kind of seem like within four days people are hitting 14k. It's just like it, okay. If you really wanted to get there as fast as possible, you could just, in theory, just make a burner account before the season ends, barely play any PvP, just get your comp up. You would face really low MMR players and could just fly on up probably. 
I mean, you get bots still too, but the MMR system's really weird. And I think, uh, and again, intention good, but the results need some tweaking. But you know, that's that's topic for another time. And we've talked about it before, but it's important bringing it up because you know this is an issue that still affects the game. So, but mm -hmm. we're all very. I think we're all very excited for local R. Uh, obviously, due to farming stuff, we didn't all get to you know have a ton of time to actually play test with him because pretty much just been locked in the farming dungeon but that's how it goes you know 48 hours after a mercenary's release right now hopefully in the future you know when the the magical coin fix is enabled we can actually get a merc mostly leveled in a day or less i would cry tears of joy if that were the case it would save me a whole whole lot of time and effort not or, just leveled but pvp ready yeah. Yes, that's the thing. Like uh, the the training ground is great for a whole big section of players, but it's really mm -hmm. not that great for the people who care most about PvP because your level thirty mercs don't do anything when they have level one abilities and items. Um, it just doesn't really do much. Malhu, I did want to ask you though. Uh, yes. When you were playing, how far up did you get him uh, before you uh, dived into PvP? Do you remember? Did you just level up? I know one strategy people have been using is just level skill one, and then if they can, level the, the middle item, and then just yeah. forget everything else. Is that what you went with? Yeah, 100%. Um, you got to level up the... Uh, his first ability is that Hailstorm, which is the important one that shoots a bunch of snowballs. It sucks that there is literally a snowball ability, so we can't call them snowballs. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I got Hailstorm 5, and then I had Frigid Winds 3. So I was gotcha. playing with the plus three frost damage, but the maxed hailstorm. Mm -hmm. And then you should then max the frost shock, which is that second ability, which is part of that like GVT counterplay where you send the big laser at Valera mm -hmm. to counter the people that try to counter you by going too slow. Um, so that's a priority. And then especially that was something that people are asking on Twitter too, is that in order to do the Luckalar 1.1 grind, he can solo clear it in one button mm -hmm. click, but you have to do like four damage per snowball so as soon as you have your local R able to have that number before, whether it's from mm -hmm. the equipment, whether it's from the skill itself, then you can just do the 1.1 over and over and over again really quickly. That's what I did to get him up to playable. And then I, once he was playable, then I was grinding like scabs. I literally spent more time grinding scabs equipment than <laughs> local R equipment. So it, it is doable with just that 1.1. And local R is actually a good example of being able to solo it, which not Merc, not every Merc can do in one button. So yeah. True. That's a great point. Um, well, that's good. A little bit of insight for anyone who wants to get him out into the fighting pit, but doesn't have the time to get him all the way max because, as we know, it takes oh, yeah. freaking forever right now. Um, I thought it would be cool if we could mention just a, uh, some theory crafting ideas as our last little section here. Uh, before we dive into that, there's one interaction or, I guess, thing to note that I want to mention from... I only played, like, two games of PvP uh, with him. But I did run into Shadow Valera. And Shadow Valera kind of plays like Shadow Samara, right? But the thing I noticed is I had my local R and he was boosted with the cookie health. But obviously he's not maxed. And against Shadow Valera, if they fully focus on turn one, they can actually kill him with the cookie health buff unless he is maxed. I believe, if I recall correctly with the map, I just was like less than five HP away from surviving. So it seems like Max will actually be a very big potential advantage there because losing Local R on turn one versus Shadow Valera is ironically a big snowball because <laughs> you're going to just, <laughs> you know, they have uh, nice one. Nice all that one, speed. <laughs> and yeah, so it's it's just, it felt really bad. Let's just say I didn't win that game. Yeah. So and it's not just Shadow Valera too. Like there are mm -hmm. other comps where they can one shot local R if he's not maxed with Cookie and like like nature, right? Like very yep. straightforward Guff, Brucon, Malfurion. Exactly lethal's local R if oh, really? he's not maxed. But if he's That's maxed, exciting. completely different game. So this is one of the first mercenaries where I would say the max cap is actually probably at an all time high in terms of actual PvP equity for mm -hmm. that merc. Thankfully it's a rare, right? Like thankfully it is actually maxable extremely easily. Uh, compared to Blender, easier, but, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, pretty, uh, pretty wild that we're starting to see that again. Yeah, so that's just something worth mentioning because we haven't really seen a ton of those breakpoints since kind of Cookie came out. Before yeah. Cookie came out, we did have a lot of those kind of breakpoints. That's when Anduin actually was one of those few mercs where it was very beneficial maxing him. 
because then he had some edge cases where he could survive through damage rather than getting a one hit. So it is cool to see that. It's I, I feel so conflicted about it because I love that there's a reward for actually going the distance or maxing your Merc, but I hate how much it uh, dramatically f affects that matchup in PvP it does. for people who don't have the time to grind out all their Mercs. It, it, it's just like... Cause it's not a, a, a skill issue, right? Like you're not playing the comp any differently. You're just losing because you haven't put the time into to grinding up the Merc, which that's definitely a feels bad. Uh, so that's, it's a double-edged sword. Like I, I hope we see more things. I do like the breakpoints. I think breakpoints are really interesting because they do make you kind of like think about the comp you're bringing and the damage you're going to do like a lot more like just barely having it's kind of like with speed and manipulation and whatnot having like just the right speed to get things done is very satisfying um and it re the game really rewards you for that kind of thing um as we've seen with valera but hopefully with local r here now we're going to be seeing a bit less of valera um might take a little bit maybe you know people have to get their local r's closer to max for some of these comps like shadow sam but even I imagine there are other ones where it doesn't matter nearly as much, right? But what do we think, like, I'm curious to, to hear some ideas. What are we excited to play, like, next week, assuming we, we get most of the, the mercs we want leveled up? Is there any, is there any like, comp that you're really itching to try right now? And... I know Mullahoo's got a list because I, I <laughs> asked him for I it. I do have a literal list. Lunch. I don't know how much of it holds <laughs> up anymore. Um, but no, I mean, my, my answer was local art and I've had a lot of fun grinding him. I'm honestly not even super... The more that I think about it, the less excited I am about something like Rathion. Apparently, Sinestra has some opportunity. Um, and so, I'm, if anything, my interest tier list has now rotated around to be like local art stuff and then... Sinestra stuff and then Galvangar kind of tied with Belinda like I, I saw no one playing Galvangar that was very surprising I think he's probably going to be very good and very impactful like that third ability is nuts that third mm -hmm. ability is going to completely change the way I think that some of these matchups go so I, I just want to can't honestly get my Sinestra and my Galvangar ready to go and just jam them into anything right and I like yeah. the comps I like the mercs that can go into these like mid-range piles I kind of call them from magic and stuff where it's it's not frost, right? It's not humans. It's not holy. It's a bunch of good mercs outside of their outside of their tribes that just synergize well and create like this cool mid range deck. So um, that those are my votes now. Nice, nice. What about you, Tankster? Anything you're you're itching to try? So out? I am uh, Ragnaros was my first legendary, so I will I will stand for Raggy. Um, nice. And so I want to take another crack at fire because uh, we now can start a uh, caster fighter protector in mm -hmm. Belinda, uh, Raggy, and um, Baron Geddon. And, uh, you know, at, I think it's it's either speed two or three, her, her fire skill is. And so you don't need crappy old Uncle Tony uh, <laughs> Antonitis to, to combo them off or Tavish who can only do it once every other turn and mm -hmm. by the way not turn one uh, so uh, I'm very excited to give that a go because I think that AoE is going to be nuts in this meta mm -hmm. oh yeah I can definitely definitely see that uh, as, a, as a big rag fan I'm very excited about that one myself I think I think we're not going to see a lot of her or even like uh, Mull who said Galvagar initially because I think a lot of people are going to level uh, local R because he can just be used more independently on his own whereas mm -hmm. some of these other mercs require a little bit more synergy um, like Galvagar obviously he has really good orc synergy orcs can do a lot to buff him up so and not everyone obviously has orcs leveled and then with the uh, Belinda obviously you know she has synergy within the new mercs and with some of the old ones so there's so many mix and match combinations there it's I think we're going to see more of that but I think we're going to see more of that a little bit later um, because it's going to take longer for people to grind those ones out uh, what about you Dallas sure. is there any um, any kind of combo or specific one of the mercs that you're, you're really looking forward to messing around with uh, like to be honest, I, I've been on holiday for the last, well, since last Friday. <laughs> um, I haven't really, like, theory, theory crafted um, mm -hmm. much. Um, I'm gonna probably rely on sensor a bit mm -hmm. uh, right. on what to play. Uh, but I think if I could name one, it'd probably be, mm, probably Belinda. I think she's kind of flexible and 
you know, I like that. Nice. The Frost Elemental yeah. is actually maybe super cracked, by the way. Like, the fact that, that she has a summon that just says, if you have a 5-speed ability, I can take it. If you have a 6-speed ability, it's mine. Turn on 1. Turn 1, mm -hmm. that is humongous. So I definitely, I think mm -hmm. Belinda should definitely be way up there. But, um, no, that's great. A lot, yeah, of, a lot of cool I, things. Yeah, so obviously I'm, you have a final I'm answer. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big Belinda fan. I am determined to make Fire Frost work. I, yes. I've thought about it a few different ways. I really, really want to, to just, like, like with what Tankster said, with the the using her to kind of be the other fire lead to go with Geddon, which it desperately, desperately needed uh, a fighter. So I'm really excited because you know I tried to make fire work before and I had some kind of okay success with it, but it did feel like that third slot was just never really great. Um, you know, I, I, funnily enough, almost, I feel like almost Alex was the best of the choices there, which is crazy because Alex didn't fit in like yeah, any comps. <laughs> and so and now we have even more options with her, but I think Belinda is just a really great option for that. And it can enable a more interesting backline situation where it's like, I have a reason to consider a backline that's not CDC or nature. I could consider mm. a frost backline because... I think most of the time they're going to focus my rag or focus my get in over the Belinda, depending on what I'm running into. Um, but we'll have to see. It's really cool design. I really just like the idea that the character supports both archetypes. And she's a little bit better than we thought because her third activated ability, the one where you do AoE damage and you select uh, Frost Weakness or Fire Weakness, that actually also determines what element the spell is so it's not a fire no damage and what her fast damage is even better than weakness like she oh, pumps okay herself. that is better yeah. yeah so it pumps it up and then it is the spell right. of that which is kind so that's just like before we didn't think because it didn't show that um in the ui the base spell doesn't have any spell school but depending on your choice you can get frost or fire so that's huge really huge addition and it's, it's kind of interesting because if Frost becomes more popular, Rag stocks like go up a little bit, right? Because he has the anti-Frost equipment, which it can be really, really huge against some of the Varden openers. Like, sure. I've won games off the back of that multiple times as Fire in the past, just because they try and get like a sneaky Varden snap that doesn't work, or their Varden dies and gets no freeze. Yeah, because, that's, that's big. If the rag dies when uh, the Varden freeze goes off, even though he dies, no freeze still happens. So oh, that's cool. that's a neat little interaction there. So that's probably the one I'm most excited for. And of course, uh, Local R, I just think, you know, he's the Valera counter we needed. And so I'm really happy we got him and I'm excited to experiment with him. Um, he, and I really want to do more with dragons. I'm determined yeah. to do stuff with dragons. I, I'm crossing my fingers. And this is going to lead into our, our ending question here. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that the next set for the of Mercs we get, that will probably come with the mini set next month in February, I'm crossing my fingers that we get more dragons because dragons were really hyped up uh, for a while for, with this release. And even though I really like the ones we got, like I really want to brew with like a Shadow Sinestra or something neat there, mm. uh, I think I wish we got more dragons because right now we got like one and a half dragons because one transforms a new dragon so however you want to quantify that but uh i think it would i mean they have you know so many dragons in the lore they can pull from that are really cool that i'm sure we're going to see in the game eventually malagos deathwing it's just the list goes on and on um mm -hmm. so that's i really would like to see a little bit more dragon support because it feels like we're getting closer like it feels mm -hmm. like sinestra mm -hmm. has some really interesting yeah. healing for dragons and some neat dragon synergy. Now Alex gets a little bit better because she can proc some of her abilities consistently. So we're like, we're getting there, but I don't think dragons are there quite yet. I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really gonna try to make it work. So we're gonna see, but uh, I, I still think they need just a little bit more, you know, support to to get there. Um, but so the the end question for this time is, what tribe or theme would you like to see get some more support? in the next mercenaries drop that we will most likely get next month when the mini set probably comes out 
Um, so who wants to, uh, to start this one off? I'll take it. I, uh, you know, I was thinking about this a lot and my instinct was elementals, but we have three, which is about the minimum you need to have some, some decent synergy. So I want to see some arcane stuff. I, yeah. I, and we have three of those, but they, they're not good. They need something to bind them together. They're almost there. But after Popper, man, arcane has so much potential that's untapped <laughs> right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. What about you, Mal? Uh, I mean, I just want protectors. I was actually talking about this on stream a little bit. The la the fact that we've gotten so many fighters from the last series of just Merc drops really, in my mind, screams that we're about to get protectors in the next one. And mm -hmm. a sweet little soul read that might be possible is, especially when they showed us that Galvangar and Belinda, they coded those as fighters, just by Belinda clearly not being a fighter. If this is supposed to be an extension of Alterac Valley that's coming out, and they gave the two, like, so uh, in Alterac Valley... Galvangar and Belinda are kind of like the the mini boss mini before the final boss. Oh, so what if Drexar yes. and Vandar are both protectors, regardless of their Ooh. thing, because the leaders are protectors, their homies are fighters, Belinda got shoved into the fighter range, now we get Spicy. two more protectors, and I really want protectors that can be played from the bench. That is why Cairn is so ubiquitous. We mm -hmm. have all these protectors that are designed for front lines, but when you look to every time I go and build a deck, I'm like, I wish I had a red guy I could put on my bench, but I just don't. I literally just don't have one. So incentives for to play protectors on the bench, maybe Vandar, maybe Drek'thar. That's what I want from the next set. That's a that's a great point. Really cool idea, and I hope we see it. I mean, we just saw them get added to duels. We know they're obviously a very core part. So yeah, of this expansion. So totally within the realm of possibility we could see them in mercenaries actually now that you said that i feel like i'd be surprised if we don't see them eventually like how are you going to put them in all all the modes and make them so important for the expansion yeah. not have them in mercs because they could do some really really cool stuff and like you said you know we're kind of low dry on protectors yeah we got some the in the valira batch but uh, between between uh, Vanessa and Sneeds, I that, they might as well not exist for for PvP, right? They aren't real PvP protectors, and they certainly aren't ones you're swapping in off the bench. Um, I've tried a bunch of stuff, and I noticed the same problem that you mentioned uh, when I was doing my human comp. I would have Lich King on the bench, and it's just he wasn't terrible, but it is night and day how much worse it feels playing him off the bench versus playing him on start. Like it's not close. It's it's really it just doesn't. It I don't I don't know what it is, but it's just it's a lot harder to capitalize on what he's trying to do. Getting him off the bench, you don't have as much because your opponent probably has some momentum at that point, right? Because you lost a merc, so you're swapping something in. Um, so it's I I would hundred percent love to see that, and that's a really good point about uh, Drekthar and uh, the other dude Ban. Whatever his name is, the Vandar, Vandar, Dwarf Man. Um, yeah, the the dwarf dude. He's he's cool. Um, but what about what about you, Dallas? Is there a certain tribe or theme you'd like to see get some little bit of extra help next uh, release? You know, <laughs> uh, thanks to uh, not thanks. Uh, sorry, uh, thanks, Molahu. It's it's really hard to go after that. So yeah. That was a good answer. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's, That's why we could last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, yeah, Zombies said uh, dragons. Uh, the tanks said arcane. And uh, I really liked your answer, Molo. So, I, what am I going to say now? Um, hey, go you beast. Can say the same thing. Let's yeah, go beast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I want to crush some people with some dinosaurs. Right? Yeah. I miss <laughs> King Crush, right? Who, you guys remember? But, but. He was so good in the hey. beginning. He was so good, and then he He's disappeared. The poor, poor dinosaur. He was just, He'll be back. He was too good for this world. world. <laughs> yeah, right? He'll be back. No, they, they will. I think they will be back, and I think but Trigor's a sleeper, expansion. right? Like, I think we've seen Trigor can do some pretty nutty things with Valyra, so I'm sure there are going to be some other weird combinations with him. I think he's one of those mercs that, like, it's kind of like that one card you see in Standard or something with some really weird text where it's like, you know what, it's like it's like Maestra. It's some weird, unplayable text that it's going to get some kind of merc that supports it, and then it's going to become Tier 1. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm calling it now for, for Tribal right, Beasts. there it is. Eventually, you know, there's going to be one merc, maybe two mercs, if we get, like, a beast set where it's just going to... Something's going to enable him, I think, with that particularly that you know that uh, heal ability to stay alive yeah. i think something's going to break that eventually in terms of buffing him up 
and just I, I mean we've seen people get soloed with Trigor before so I think it's something we can see again if he gets the, the support but that's a great answer Dallas that's that's a really good one I mm -hmm. hope I hope that's what we can get um, but you know I think that is all we have time for here today this has been a really great show I'm really happy we got to have Dallas on here uh, we do have some housekeeping to do though before we say goodbye so where can uh, we find each of you guys here on the internet? Uh, do you want to start, Tankster? Yeah, sure. You can always find me uh, at Tankster1922 on Twitter. Also, uh, hiding behind the Fighting Pit uh, podcast official Twitter at Fighting Pit. Uh, more recently, you can find me on the noproshere.blogspot.com. I've got a couple of articles up there. And always lurking on Discord. <laughs> awesome, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, same stuff as always. Yeah, I'm on twitch.tv slash Malahu, um, esports.gg, write some articles there. I'll probably actually end up putting out, hopefully maybe next week, I'll put another guide, like the fighter guide, protector guide that I did for all the other mercenaries, except it's not going to be internal to the other ones, so I'm not going to update the other ones. I'm probably going to just do a guide for every release now. So you can expect a guide that talks about where to get all these, what comps to put these guys in. It might even actually go a lot more in-depth because it's not going to be 20 marks long. That thing literally took me like 40 <laughs> hours per guy. Um, but yeah, so then on uh, Twitter, same thing, Mullahoo TTV. I tried to change my tag and someone has Mullahoo. Well, who has Mullahoo? It's not me. Stop. Give it to me. So, uh, on, on Twitter, if you, if you search Mullahoo, you'll find me or my brother. That's that's so funny. Uh, I had similar issue here on Twitch. Right? They're, they're, I thought it was me, but it's someone else who took zombies with masks. Go nom nom. And they've been inactive for a couple months or something, so I'm just like waiting out the clock to yeah. where Twitch has a certain time where they'll let you take an inactive name. Mm. And so I'm just waiting out the clock and I'll get my, my original name back. Um, but, but what about you, Dallas? Where can, uh, where can our viewers find you at? I think uh, number one, uh, twitch.tv mm -hmm. uh, forward slash Dallas underscore 777. From there, you can link pretty much anything but uh my, also i just want to shout out my uh instagram mm -hmm. which is uh new vicious york uh sorry new dot vicious dot york that's my uh alter ego um <laughs> as you can see new york dallas anyway um i'll probably be changing my uh my twitch name so yeah just go, Ooh, go to go to twitch Spicy. oh well i i wanted dallas underscore 777 but someone has that as well so i know how you feel Melo. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um, someone I'll, I'll has come... tangster as well i get i get you <laughs> yep yeah yeah i'll think of something cool and then i'll i'll change it to that so nice. yeah. awesome all right awesome well thank, thank you, you uh so much for coming on the show again huge yeah, congrats you. to the uh the big win you had in the event that was awesome to watch especially given that you were playing at like eight in the morning i don't know when did that event start oh, for you? you like six in the morning or something crazy it i was... mean i had about two hours sleep yeah i woke up at 3 30 a.m you're um, a machine yeah and... when i listened to my vod i i realized i was so tired <laughs> it, you could tell it in my voice yeah <laughs> yeah and you were still and get this you, I was lucky you were one of the few people who didn't have a buy in the first round you had no. to put in that extra work <laughs> that the majority of players did not have to do yeah oh uh, it got me yeah, warmed yeah, up yeah. it was good it yeah was good. <laughs> no that's good you had a great performance man again it's oh, super the, uh, yeah go ahead no the the first round like uh i had an issue with um battlefly because the first mm -hmm. time i was using it and um pasca uh, saved the day um oh, awesome. because i didn't hit ready i would have forfeited my oh really result, wow. I guess. yeah yeah shout out to pasca then yeah that's yeah, awesome shout out to pasca for organizing that amazing tournament you oh know? yeah big, and big and of course the support team oh yeah. yeah everyone everyone involved uh worth pointing out that community was a hundred percent or that that tournament was a hundred percent by the community for the community you know we really just passionate people about mercenaries we're lucky enough to get a sponsor from hs replay to get you know that awesome prize pool so it was really you know it shows the power of grassroots events and I think we're definitely going to have some more stuff like that, hopefully, to look forward to throughout the year. Um, I know we have some stuff planning in the works. Uh, nothing official to announce yet, but definitely keep your eyes out soon, TM. Um, but soon. HS Replay, if you want to sponsor us, shout out Tankster1922. <laughs> definitely, yeah. We, we would not say no to a, to a, to a sponsorship on the, the Merc show, right? But this has been really fun. As always, uh, you can find me 
YouTube, Zombies Go Nom Nom. Same on Twitter. I actually just hit affiliate Twitch recently, so I'm trying to do more streaming stuff nice. now. Nice. I did long stream the day of the content release. That was really fun. And now I've just been so busy solo grinding that I just haven't felt like streaming it. So I'm just going to power through some more of it and then hopefully get some more streaming soon over on Twitch. That is uh, twitch.tv slash zombies with a Z at the end. Go nom nom. That's where you can find me. And as always, our show is going to be up on YouTube and all regular podcasting platforms. Apple, Spotify, RSS feed, the works, all that good stuff. But if you're still listening, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. And this is the Fighting Pit signing off. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.